Are you a fan of Korean cuisine? I know that I am. One of the main ingredients that they use is a gochujang. I know it's an interesting spelling. Um, but yeah, this is a sun-dried red chili paste. And another must-have is a Korean barbecue sauce because I'm not going to overwhelm me or Marcus with just the chili paste. So there's always a good idea to have some balance to it. In addition, I will go with my trusted um, Shaoxing rice wine and some rice vinegar because vinegar cuts through the heat of the chili so this will make it more balanced. So why don't we get started. Um, the main thing that we will be marinating is chicken thighs because it's juicier and there is so much more succulents from it rather than chicken breast. So why don't we pour all this chicken into this bowl. Now I am going to marinate the chicken. Uh, let's put some Shaoxing rice wine for a good base. And let's add some rice vinegar. I need more of the other one too. Another thing that I forgot to mention before was sesame oil because I think that it adds um, some nice aroma to it. So a little bit does go a long way. So I'm not going to overwhelm this dish at all. Okay, and now for the... Let's start off with one tablespoon. <laughs> okay, I think I need more than one. Maybe just two for now. Next, I will be adding this Korean barbecue sauce. I'm not measuring, I'm just gonna add this and then I think I'm going to eyeball it. It does taste quite nice. Uh, so let's try to... blend it and uh, mix it all about. They say that it is good to have this mixture and this chicken in the mixture for a few hours before you cook so that the meat will take in all the flavors. Oh, wow. It smells very marinated. No, it smells um like soy sauce, sort of, um, as well. So I think that these have been coated properly now so I will have it in the refrigerator for maybe two to three hours and then come back and put it into the oven to cook and then I will be right back after it's in the refrigerator for a little bit. The chicken thighs have been in the refrigerator for a good three hours so I think that they're rather nice and marinated and spicy now. So I'm heating up the air fryer and I think it is time to put this through. So this is the rack. So let's put the skin side down. Okay, so they are all in now so I I can't wait to see how they come out. It's ready. Okay, so don't let the charred bits fool you. 
I think it is because it has been glazed. That's why it's like that. So why don't I spruce it up with some spring onions. Okay, so just like they say, the proof is in the eating. So let's dig in. It's perfectly cooked. It is so moist and it's so tasty because of the marinade and because of the gochujang. So I think it's Yes, I think that it may look kind of burnt, but I don't think that it gives that impression in my mouth. It looks burnt, but it's not burnt. It, like it's moist and delicious. So I think you need to get some gochujang and make a spicy marinade. But to be fair, it isn't that spicy, so you could always add more if you want it to be really hot but i think this is even good enough for marcus too so i would say use that gochujang and spice up your dinners thanks for watching the show today if you like what you see please subscribe We've had saffron in the house for the past few years and I've been wanting to use it and just haven't thought of an idea to create a recipe. And then the other day I had a look around the internet and I came up with this. Saffron, pistachio and white chocolate cookies. And it sprung out because when we were in Greece on the island of Aegina, which is famous for pistachios, we bought a big bag of the nuts there. So I thought this is the perfect chance to use some of the saffron, which doesn't go off for years, by the way, and the pistachios. But what is saffron? Now, it's very expensive. Um, we got, this is half of the amount that we had, and um, it's quite aromatic. And that cost about £3.25 a few years ago. It's probably gone up in price with inflation now. Saffron is one of the most precious spices in the world. The spice originates from a flower commonly known as the saffron crocus and is believed to have originated in Greece. So even more of a reason to use it with the pistachios. Saffron has a sweet floral taste and that's why I'm going to use it in the cookies because they're sweet. So let's see how it turns out. The ingredients you need are 15 mils of milk, a big pinch of saffron, one medium egg, 50 grams of golden castor sugar, 50 grams of light brown soft sugar, a pinch of salt, 150 grams of plain flour, one quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, 100 grams of white chocolate, 50 grams of pistachios roughly chopped, and 110 grams of butter, melted. The first stage is to warm the milk in a saucepan with the saffron. So we want this milk to be absolutely steaming so as it basically gets the extract from the saffron out. But we don't want the milk to curdle so there's lots of steam coming off. Mm, I can start to smell that already. Right, it's starting to boil. So I think that is the point that we turn it off. Now we are going to whisk in the melted butter. So we'll pour this into the mixture. Like so. And we'll get whisking. 
Once whisked, the mixture then goes into the fridge to chill completely. Our mixture is still cooling in the fridge and it's almost ready. So now it's time to mix our egg with the caster sugar. So we've got our electric mixer here. So one egg goes in and the caster sugar goes in as well. And then we lower this down and start mixing. It should take between three and five minutes to get it into a nice fluffy mixture. Well, we've got our mix here that we just completed. And now what we want to do is to add in the uh, baking powder, a pinch of salt and our flour. And I've got a spatula at hand and that is because we're going to use it to mix all the ingredients together. Like this. Now you must be careful not to over mix this, but you do want all the ingredients to combine. Mm, there's a real saffron smell coming off this already. And I'm sure it's going to get even better once we add our nuts. That looks about ready to add the chocolate and the pistachios. So we have chopped the chocolate up into little cubes because of course if you have like um, chocolate chip cookies you want to have the chips. So they go in and we scrunched our pistachios in this little bag. Let's have a smell of them. There's actually no smell off them. I'm going to taste one. Mm, oh my gosh, it's quite, quite salty. So in that goes, like so. And we just want to like gently mix them all together now. Now with this cookie mixture, there is no need to start molding shapes and putting them onto like a tray or something like that. No, it's, it seems on the face of it a bit easier, but let's see what we're doing. We are going to spoon out the mixture onto this piece of parchment paper that I've got. And we're then going to roll it up into the shape of a log and um, turn it into a sort of a Christmas cracker shape. Try to get as much of it out as I can. We don't want to have any wastage if possible. Oh, I've just realised there's something I haven't done. Paul, do you know what that is? Mm-hmm. What's that? Eat the batter. <laughs> That's right, lick the spoon, or in this case, the spatula. <laughs> no, I wouldn't recommend it raw. <laughs> but, okay, there we go. We've got this in a pretty good shape, I think. So we just roll it up like this. And scrunch the ends like you would with a Christmas cracker. Slightly cut off the edges here. And the next thing we do, and I've got a bit ready, is to roll it up in some cling film. So I'll rip this off and hopefully it'll keep its shape. Put that over like that and get it all sort of like nicely tightly packed. There we go. So this lovely cracker now goes into the fridge for at least two hours, preferably overnight if you can afford that amount of time. And when it comes out, it should be set, and then we shall cut it into discs. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, but first we have to do the cooking. And we've left our lovely cracker in the fridge for, I reckon, about four hours. So it does feel quite solid now. So it's like unwrapping a present. We're also preheating the oven, because you're going to uh, cook the uh, biscuits or the cookies at 190 Celsius for 12 to 15 minutes or until they look golden. So 
Let's see how this turns out. I'm going to be quite careful with this. Ooh, that doesn't look too bad. Yeah, that's it's not soggy, which is a good thing. <laughs> because if it was, it would just be like a hot mess and it just drop straight out. So the idea was to get about six cookies out of this. And I reckon by pushing it in a bit and molding it, we'll be able to do that. Each cookie should be about one centimeter thickness. So before we, we cut, I've got a very sharp knife here. I'm just gonna mark one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's about right. So, okay, let's get sawing, as I say. Is it one of them bigger than the other ones? Well, we'll get to that at the time. <laughs> I think it might be this one that's bigger. Yeah, ooh, gosh, it is a bit sticky. And I think I'm just going to like slightly mold them. And they will expand as well. So we've got it in the, the biggest pan shape that we've got. Voila! Okay, so now we're going to pop them into the oven, as I say, at 190 degrees Celsius for about 12 to 15 minutes or until they are golden and spread out a little bit. So in they go. Mmm. So the cookies have been sitting on a wire rack now for, well, a good couple of hours to make sure that they've completely cooled down. So there's only one thing left to do, and that is to try them out. So we'll have a little look underneath. Look, it's sort of like quite soft, but nice and golden on the top. So let's take a bite. All right. I'm not overly enthusiastic. You always get honesty in this show. And what does it taste like? There is a strong taste of saffron through it. Now, I think I may have overdone it. Uh, what about the nuts? The nuts, I'm not even detecting at all. You don't now, taste it. The thing was, when I smelt the... <laughs> <laughs> when I smelt the nuts earlier, <laughs> there wasn't much of a scent off them. Oh, God. Uh, um, and when I tasted them, they were a little bit salty. Um, the chocolate, you can see, but I'm not really picking that up at all. And I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm just saying that the saffron is slightly overpowering. A little goes a long way, I think. I think so. So that's the lesson. If there is a lesson to be learned here at all, with saffron, just a little sprinkling. You put a really big pinch. I did. <laughs> but then when I pinch, I pinch a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to continue eating this. It's not bad. It's just a bit too much saffron. But we'll see you next time. Bye. For the bloopers? What bloopers? <laughs>